and welcome to Feywood. So I just did an empties video and I figured while I'm here and I've done myself up, which doesn't happen as often as it did because of lockdowns and things, um, I thought I would just go ahead and film a collective craft haul video. Little bits and pieces, possibly not everything that I've got since last time I saw you guys, but like most of the stuff. Um, I like to do collective hauls because you know, it's just then I'm not like buying excessive amounts of things. It's just sharing with you things that I've thought I might want to try and pick up over a period of time from different places and showing them all at once. And, you know, it's to give you guys some inspiration, maybe um, introduce you to some things that you maybe didn't think about using, give you a bit of a sneak peek of some things that I might be making, all that sort of stuff. So that's why um, I like doing these videos. Plus, it also does help me because these videos are a little bit easier to film and edit. And so when I'm doing my big project videos, I need something like this in the middle to really help me... Um, Give me time <laughs> to do all the other fun things that I do because everything even um, like cooking videos and stuff all it all takes planning and time uh, a lot more than say sitting down and just doing a haul video so anyway plus who doesn't like some vicarious you know shopping experience all right I've got some exciting things and you know I might just start with the most exciting to me at least anyway because it's like right in front of me here and it's big and it's awesome and I have not played with it yet and it is this baby so and it's got the compressor down here as well which I don't know if I'll pick up and show you guys but like it's an airbrush oh um, I have wanted an airbrush since I was a little girl and you know I got into um, art very early, like really early, because like I was ridiculously socially awkward. I've always been a little odd and, uh, you know, always say the wrong things and don't fit in and a bit of a misfit and all this sort of stuff. So I think that's why I gravitated to doing art because it was something that I could do on my own quietly and you know it was an outlet for me for sure and I discovered pretty early on a lot of um, fantasy artwork which I was in love with and I'm terrible with names so I can't remember <laughs> like some of the names of the artists off the top of my head but I remember looking at all sorts of different um, like I mean the two main ones were Alan Lee and Brian Froud for me of course but like there was a lot of um, other really beautiful visual artists that I looked looked at their artworks and I can't remember their names with a lot of beautiful landscapes and shading and amazing detail and just all of these amazing uh, techniques that I just didn't understand how they could possibly do it especially when it came to shading and things like that and I remember my dad telling me early on I was like how could they possibly paint it that perfectly and he's like they they use an airbrush and I was like oh my god I need one of these airbrushes this is a revelation and so I always wanted one but then I guess look you know when you're young you can't afford it and then as I got older I moved away from doing artwork for a, the longest time and moved into making jewelry for years and years and really just haven't done that much in, in terms of um, drawing and illustrating and painting and that sort of thing. So I just never, I never got one. Uh, and you know, I was, I, I actually won um, an award at work, which gives me like a voucher, and you can allocate that to different things. And I was like, I really want to make the most of this voucher. It's a hundred and fifty dollar voucher. I was like, I really want to get something that like I wouldn't, like I maybe wouldn't necessarily treat myself to or what have you or just like something large that it would really help me with instead of lots of little things and I thought you know what I'm gonna get I'm gonna get an airbrush and I had to have a look around because I could only pick you know there were certain things I could use the voucher for and the only two places I think that I could use the voucher that had an airbrush was uh was it catch of the day I think was one and Amazon Ended up being Amazon because I found one that was like a, a compressor airbrush in one with really good feedback. 
Uh, we actually got the Amazon Prime because it was cheaper to do that than pay the shipping. Like it was about the same price. So, so we now have Amazon Prime, which is probably dangerous because it has encouraged us to buy more things from Amazon. So yeah, anyway, um, I cannot wait to play with this. I haven't even opened it. I have had it for a couple of weeks now, but I've been like up to my elbows with another project so I really want to wait till I've got time to sit down and properly properly play with this that's the compressor even if I don't actually do like artworks with it uh, I was thinking the reason I wanted to get it was it would be great for all sorts of projects and you guys know I do all sorts of different things and I often use the spray paint and this would be a way to do it in a much more precise way. I am so excited about this because I think it's just going to allow, like it's going to open up a whole new range of techniques that I can use. So yeah, that's going to be so much fun. It came with some little cleaning things as well. So that's good. I also did have to wait to play with it a little bit because I didn't buy paint straight away for it but I now have bought some paint for it. Um, I've got two sets of paints. So I got this little model making paint set because it has a range of colours. It does have a lot of browns and greys and blacks and things but uh, that could be handy as well because I have been wanting to sculpt. I think I talked a while ago about wanting to sculpt um, like a tree and maybe make a tree lamp or something like that. And that's still something on the cards for me. I haven't quite figured out what I want to make with that. But having some natural colours I think will be handy for that sort of thing. And then obviously I had to get the metallics because... You know, I like sparkly things, so <laughs> anything metallic and shiny and everything I'm all about. So I had to get that for sure. So yeah, I can't wait to play with those. I did also get this, the Flow Improver. My understanding is, and like I haven't used an airbrush in my life, so I don't know for sure, but I think you can use this in other types of paint potentially to... Um, to be able to use it in the airbrush. You have to be a bit careful, I think, with the type of paint you use in the airbrush because it could clog it up, but, um, which is why I stuck with ones that are specifically airbrush paints. I didn't want to just um, go ahead and try any old paint because I don't know enough to do that. I'm sure you can use other paints and you just have to like water them down properly to use them. But yeah, again, just didn't want to play around with that. So um, yeah, so anyway, watch this space. I'll probably have some sort of project, hopefully soon, where I can play with that. Yeah, I'll have to have a think about like what I want to use it for first. And I might have to have some sort of test piece to, you know, feel it out and work out how it works. Uh, speaking of sculptures and all of that, I'm always looking for tools to use to help me sculpt and um, I wanted to get these for a while because I used to use tools kind of like this although I think the ones I used back when because I did sculpture as a major um, when I was doing fine arts and we this is like a thick flat kind of wire they've used on this which I probably don't prefer. I actually liked the ones that we used to use which were just literally a, a round piece of wire that was pulled across and then there'd be another bit of wire that would wrap around the wood. But I mean look these will be fine. It, they're great for any kind of clay work. I used to use it for uh, ceramics specifically because that's what we would use. But I thought do you know, it might be really good for other things like epoxy, sculpt, and polymer clays and stuff like that. Although I'm, at, I'm finding, like I said, I'm finding this flat shape a little bit awkward. So I may have to still look for ones that are just the wire and see if I prefer that. But we'll play around with these more and see how they go. And then I got these little silicon ended tools. And I want to say, was I watching Ace of Clay? Maybe Ace of Clay? I, and I am subscribed to another clay artist, um, Zan Von Zed. How do you say his name? All right, I did have it right. Zan Von Zed, excellent artist. I watch, uh, I'm subscribed to them and watch the all the different sculptures and everything and get a lot of inspiration. It doesn't really go into specifics about 
like what to use I don't think uh, but it's really interesting just to watch the things being created anyway and I, I think it was Ace of Clay though that I watched and saw um, them link to these specific tools and these have the silicon end on it and I had just bought some on eBay again eBay can be hit and miss and I haven't had the best of luck with silicon anything like um, eBay wise so see that little tiny silicon end on it there and apparently because silicon doesn't stick um, like it's sort of non-stick when it comes to epoxy sculpt and stuff like that they're very good for sculpting that, that sort of thing um, I've had issues with the silicon part coming out of the ones that I've bought in the past they've been really cheap and crappy whereas these apparently were very good and so I was like you know what I'm just gonna give it a try because I just want a set of silicon tools that actually work so they seem pretty good and I like that they're smaller than some of the other silicon tools that I've seen so uh, I've only used them a little bit so I can't really say but no, none of them fell apart so yay <laughs> we're already off to a good start and on the sculpture front I did get some more clay I was recently if you guys watch my videos you know I was making all of those picture frame things where um, I was sculpting different goblins and some other things onto the frames. I had very little clay to work with, so, uh, you know, there was a little bit of, like, other things being used as well. I had, like, less than, like, maybe 250 grams worth of clay, I think I had, and I was like, oh, jeez, is that going to be enough for what I want? So, in the middle of making it, I'm like, oh, shit, let me order some more clay. Um... <laughs> It came afterwards and I ended up having enough clay so I didn't actually need it but I but I need it anyway just to have some on hand because I'm always using clay for things like polymer clay. I got a Kato poly clay. This one I have a love-hate relationship with. I love how strong it is. It is really I think the strongest of the polymer clays at least the ones I've tried the Kato but it's really hard to condition and yeah really really tough to get going because it's so firm and I thought I would give this original super sculpty a go I think it's the original one um, I've been getting the newer uh, super sculpty oh what one is they have like the firm medium and so forth and those ones have been fine but I I think I think Zan Von Zed actually was using this or one of these more original ones and it seemed to be like a really good clay to work with. Like it looked like it was um, warming up very nicely and able to be sculpted into fine details and stuff. I mean, look, he's probably making it look really good because he's so good. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, let me try that one though because there must be something to that. And I've, I just want to sort of play around with different clay types to see what I like. So I'll give that a go. I mean, I can feel it is, it's certainly softer than the Kato. Uh, which is not surprising because Kato again is just the hardest clay <laughs> to get warmed up like you are gonna have to put some time in when it comes to warming this up before you get started so yeah but like the nice thing too of this like I said if you need a bit more strength in something then Kato is good for that and when I bought that clay I actually bought this as well like honestly like it was such a just a curiosity factor which is happens a lot for me to be honest um <laughs> I got this concrete pigment I'm not even really sure what this is used for I'll be honest like I don't know if it's meant to be a texture it sort of looks like a texture I can't remember what it was that drew me in but I either I think I I think I assumed that it was a texture and it would be nice if if it was. I could love to do some actual texture mediums. That might be something I might have to think about using too. Especially if I do some more of like um, do some sculptures where I'm trying to sculpt something natural. I, I think texture mediums are a great thing or even just stuff out of nature is honestly great. Like I you've seen me use like um, bark in things. I love doing that. Right well now a couple of things that I bought that really don't have a project in mind at all but it was like I'm part of I've mentioned being um, joined to this like craft d stash uh, 
Facebook page. There's heaps of them around. In your area you could probably find some D-Stash. I recommend picking one that's like close to your area because shipping and stuff but uh, this is one for like Victoria and it's Victoria. It's at least in Australia so and I don't always want what's there because there's all different types of craft things there like stuff that I don't do you know a lot of stamping stuff which I do a little bit but not not a lot um, I don't do paper crafts and stuff like that usually so it's usually not an enticement thank goodness because otherwise my bank account would be crying um, which it probably already is but I did see someone was like posting um, really cheap ribbons so I think these are like 20 meters or something I don't know it's a lot of it was quite a substantial length of ribbon um, 90 cents a pop for the ribbon and it's about a centimeter wide and just a whole rainbow of colors and I love having ribbon on hand they're great for costumes I have also wanted to learn how to make like ribbon flowers like you can do embroidery ribbon flowers and I've had this book um, in my Amazon you know how you can add things to your cart or whatever and then like save it for later there's this book from um, an artist there where they've done all these like like it teaches you how to do ribbon craft and I really want to get it <laughs> and I just haven't pulled the trigger on it yet because I think mostly I'm like when am I having time to do that like I need to like dedicate some time I need to have that be a project I'm ready to do I guess but now that I have all these ribbons maybe I will and from the same seller I think she got me with all the rainbows uh, just a bunch of like polyester threads for the sewing machine they're just handy to have again for costume stuff I do have some like Goodman and well and some like really cheap nasty cotton thread that's half tangled um, <laughs> and I was it was the really cheap nasty stuff that I was thinking that's the main one I have that's in a range of colors and so if I needed something to make I don't know either a costume or a little accessory or some other thing that where I needed to sew something together uh, I sort of I rely on that and it's super old cotton and it's not there's not much of each color uh, and this was again it was super cheap it was like was it 10 bucks? I don't know. I think they were like a dollar each. I don't know. It was it was cheap. Quite a few there. Oh, on the clay front, I don't think I've shared this with you. Epoxy sculpt. The big mama. So I, and I did mention that I got it in the empties video I just did, but I think I have I mentioned it before that I bought this much epoxy sculpt. <laughs> Again, Amazon. I have mostly seen this available on Amazon for the best price so that's kind of why I got it yeah I have found this to be such a great clay and I've been getting into using clays for things for projects lately so um, and having one that's as strong as epoxy it's so good because you don't have to fire it and it dries really super hard obviously it has limitations you know you've got a, a set working time so you really don't want to mix too much up you know at the same at the one time which I have done numerous times <laughs> I've managed to use it but like because it's not cheap so you don't want to waste it you want to make sure you use all of it but like I have bitten off more than I can chew and been stuck sculpting for much longer than I wanted to be because I've just mixed too much clay up at once <laughs> and I'm like I must use it so just small bits because you can add on to it at any time uh, you don't have to like do it all in one go so um, and I heard uh, one of one tip I did hear from someone was just to have a, a backup project on the go or some other thing that you can use it for so that if you do make too much you can quickly you know make some other things that you'll use later uh, so I think that's a good idea like have a think about like if you end up making too much what else can you use that clay on and then just use it in that time frame because you get about two two and a half hours maybe working time with it I do have a project in mind for it and I don't know yet whether it's going to come this year or next year because this year is quickly leaving us thank fuck for that because 2020 <laughs> anyway um <laughs> bloody hell this year hey well, my camera decided to cut me off randomly there. Um, anyway, 
I was saying that, yeah, I did, I have bought a couple of other things from Amazon craft wise. And one of those being this UV resin. So I, I wanted to get some uh, resin that I could use, like UV resin that I could use and get some molds and things like that. So I've got a little UV lamp now. So that's key. Don't get UV resin unless you have a UV lamp. Otherwise, it's just going to sit there and never dry. Because unlike like epoxy resin dries on its own, whereas UV needs the UV light. I mean, look, over time it might get the UV rays naturally, but it's going to take a really long time to uh, set up. So you definitely want to get yourself a little light. So anyway, I have that. I feel like there was a nozzle on the end of this and I'll have to check that I still have that because hopefully I do because that would make this easier to pour. It had good feedback. It's I just wanted a small amount to test out and then I got a whole big pack of little molds and let me open some and show you. So, I don't know if you're going to be able to see these, but they're different size crystals. Like so they look like little crystal shards, crystal points and things and I think there's like 30 or so of them. There's quite a few different shapes. It has some findings in there as well, which I don't know if I'll use those, but I think the idea is you could uh, make some of these crystals and, you know, wear them as a necklace and stuff. And yeah, maybe I will. Um, but I, I just like the idea of having different shaped crystals and things that I could use in projects. So that's why I got those. There's a set as well, um, and again, this is Amazon. Uh, there was a set of flowers that I was like, ooh, little flowers would be really cute, especially in jewelry. So very tempted by that one as well. And yeah, I might start branching out and trying some more mold making. It's something I've wanted to do for the longest time and I've just never, I've never delved into that sort of thing. So, you know, why not? <laughs> and the other thing I got was these little paint brushes so they look like really good um, easy to hold paint brushes which is good it's got a nice kind of thick part here for your fingers and they're really nice fine detailed brushes and I always love having you know lots of nice thin brushes and brushes do tend to at times get ruined around me because I use all different things I do try to clean them and sometimes it works and sometimes I've I mess it up and the brush is gone. Um, you know, if I like use latex or glue or whatever and I'm like, oh, let me just fix that with a bit of, I'll just use this paintbrush and then before I know it, the paintbrush is dead. So that happens sometimes. <laughs> All right, everything else is kind of random. So I'm just going to show you. <laughs> so I got these cool little like oil slick looking crystals. Hopefully they're coming up in camera because they are in plastic but they are these beautiful purpley goldy colors. Again, just on eBay, I needed to get some crystal things I like. Uh, for my jewelry, I make these tags. I, I put a lot of effort into making the packaging really nice, so I, I make really nice tags and I put crystals on them. And I need to make some more up, so I was like, oh, I better get some crystals for it. So I got these little ones, which are a little bit different in color than the ones I've used in the past, but I thought these would be even prettier, so hopefully. I have a big bunch of screwdrivers. My husband bought me a screwdriver set, mostly because I keep stealing his screwdrivers and he keeps getting annoyed with me. So <laughs> he's like, all right, it's time that you get your own screwdriver set because I don't know, there's just been things a lot lately that I've needed screwdrivers for. So now I have my own screwdrivers. So that's good. Uh, I bought a few different latches and things like I, so I, originally I did buy this like latch thing that I wanted to use for that. I've got a paper mache treasure chest. I don't know if you guys remember me showing you that and that's something I do want to do up and I wanted to get a latch for it and anyway I didn't contact the seller but they they put it in an envelope basically and the envelope came it was ripped at the front obviously the latch has just come out and so I, I all I got was a broken envelope I should have gone back and told them but I didn't bother like and, and as well my husband was saying oh, it was only five bucks don't worry about it so I didn't and then I bought some more 
and then I bought like three <laughs> and then I saw one that was like super large this is not going to be used for that but because like it's massive but what I thought this could be cool for was like some other project in the future where you know maybe I want to make some sort of steampunk looking thing oh or I want to throw it around I don't know or like thing for my room or something I don't know I just love the look of it maybe a book I don't know I just really liked it and it sparked something I was like yeah I could picture that being in a project so I grabbed it, it was only a few dollars anyway so like it wasn't pricey uh, maybe five dollars at most uh, again eBay I buy uh, so many different things on eBay a couple other sizes I won't take these out because I don't want to lose the bits and pieces but hopefully one of them will fit the treasure chest I will be doing that as a project eventually and probably for a video I've just got to think about how I want to do it so I have really enjoyed using the Dremel and I've been using it a, a little bit more lately for different things so it's such a super handy tool the Dremel and I wanted to branch out and get an extra set for it because you know you get um, you can get Dremels with like a core set of various things depending on the set you know some come with more things or less things but then you can um, add to it later so I got one that was just I don't know mid-range has some sanding discs and um, some engraving bits and other bits and pieces in there like wire brush stuff like that uh, but I wanted this one because this has this is specifically engraving and for doing like clay sculptures and stuff like that this can be really handy like epoxy sculpt as well you can sand and you could use a dremel on as well if you wanted to so like you know if you sculpted it and you needed to make some adjustments afterwards you can and so I was like yeah this will be good I haven't used this yet and I think it was about like 25 bucks from Bunnings uh, but yeah there's just so many different shapes in there so gonna be really handy and then lastly I bought something from Etsy a while back and this is like little uh, kind of dichroic bits and pieces that you can use with either polymer clay or I guess resin probably as well a few different colors there and then it's got these little different colors as well and I believe you can like cut them up and like add little flecks and stuff in there it has instructions thank goodness because I've not done it before so um, it was just, it's, again one of those things where I was like well I'm playing with a lot of resins and I've got um, I'm wanting to like branch out with different things with clays and things and this has been something I'd love to try as well and just that ability as well to make something uh, for my own jewelry so if I wanted a certain stone or something like that like a certain um, cabochon I could make it instead of having t to find it uh, so I like I like that idea and who knows what else I'll get up to with it like it's just another thing that I'd love to give a try to so we'll see how that turns out I don't know it's again all, so many things like there's so many things that I'm trying that I've not tried because uh, I've just I just never have and um, I'm trying with you so uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed seeing all these bits and pieces that I have uh, some of this you'll see in future videos so stay tuned for that I'm really looking forward to um, trying out the airbrush and stuff like that. That will be a really fun thing. Like really most of this stuff um, I know exactly what I'm using it for so like I'm, I'm really excited about the different projects. Some of them take a really long time to end up getting to you guys. Like like some of it's really surprising to me how long I, it takes me to get to circle back to things because I don't know I mean look sometimes it's just the way of things you just you, you know things take a natural progression in in the end like you have all these plans but then I might have deadlines for certain things like I might be working on a thing that needs to be done or you know I'm on a series of videos that has to be done I don't know it's it's weird but like I just I couldn't believe for example how long it took me to do the books because I showed those on one of my very first videos and then I, was it this year that I did the books? I've lost track, all track of time. Um, and same with the um, cloud, like 
I was like inspired to do that cloud from other people trying the cloud and wanting and I wanted to put my spin on it and it just took so long for me to finally try it and then yeah finally did it but um all right guys I think I'm getting tired and I'm starting to waffle so <laughs> I'm gonna leave you there um again I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I have and what I'm like planning like sort of I mean it's a sneak peek without a sneak peek really um you know, what's your, what's your guesses as to what I'm going to use some of these things for? Uh, some of it I've sort of mentioned, but yeah. Uh, I'd love to hear if anyone has any guesses. It'd be really interesting if anyone was close. Um, I was going to, when I if I did a Patreon, I was going to like um, share actually what I have planned because I usually do know what I'm going to make with things well and truly in, in advance. You probably would be surprised how long it takes sometimes for things to come about. Um, but yeah, it's kind of fun to kind of hint at things. So, uh, yeah, anyway, subscribe if I haven't, uh, scared you away with all of my rambling on about various things. And if you're keen to see any of the things that I'm sort of hinting at. And for the rest of you, I'll see you next time in Faywood. Bye guys.